the entrance and antiphon. Whoever obeys and teaches the commandments of the Lord will be called great in the kingdom of heaven, says the Lord. Good morning. Today's Mass is being offered for Karen Glenn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. St. John Bosco, as a father and teacher of the young, grant we pray that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the second book of Samuel. King David said to Joab and the leaders of the army who were with him, tour all the tribes in Israel from Dan to Beersheba and register the people that I may know their number. Joab then reported to the king the number of people registered. In Israel, 800,000 men fit for military service. In Judah, 500,000. Afterwards, however, David regretted having numbered the people and said to the Lord, I have sinned grievously in what I have done. But now, Lord, forgive the guilt of your servant, for I have been very foolish. When David rose in the morning, the Lord had spoken to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, This is what the Lord says. I offer you three alternatives. Choose one of them, and I will inflict it on you. Gad then went to David to inform him. He asked, Do you want a three years' famine to come upon your land, or to flee from your enemy three months while he pursues you, or to have a three-day pestilence in your land? Now consider and decide what, what I must reply to him who sent me. Gad, uh, David answered Gad, I am very, in very serious difficulty. Let us fall by the hand of God, for he is most merciful. But let me not fall by the hand of man. Thus David chose the pestilence. Now it was time of the wheat harvest, when the plague broke out, broke out among the people. The Lord then sent a pestilence over Israel from morning until the appointed time, and 70,000 of the people from the Dan to Beersheba died. But when the angel stretched forth his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord regretted the calamity and said to the angel, causing the destruction among the people, Enough now, stay your hand. The angel of the Lord was standing at the threshold floor of Aruna, Arauna, the Jebusite. When David saw the angel who was striking the people, he said to the Lord, it is I who have sinned, it is I, the shepherd, who have done wrong. But these are sheep, what have they done? Punish me and my kindred. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. 
Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in times of stress. Through deep waters of overflow, they shall not reach him. You are my shelter. From the stress you will preserve me. With glad cries of freedom, you will ring me, you will ring me round. says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and John and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe you've heard the old adage that we can't give what we don't have. And David, King David seemed to understand this well because he seemed to know that the Lord was merciful and then he was merciful with those entrusted to him. When given these options to choose for his uh, consequences for his sin, he says, let us fall by the hand of God for he is most merciful. He recognized the mercy of God. That yes, he had, wrong, he had done wrong, he had sinned, and there were consequences for that, but he realized the mercy of God. And this led him to say at the end of the reading, Lord, I have sinned, have mercy. He says, but the sheep have, have done no wrong. Punish me and not them. David said, punish me and not my people. Have mercy on them as you have, have, have mercy on me. So he experienced God's mercy. And then he wanted to share that mercy with others. St. John Bosco, whose memorial we celebrate today, was a man who understood this well. Because this was the way that he instructed those who cared for young boys with him uh, to lead in patience and mercy. And in a letter to them, um, John Bosco had established uh, orphanages and workhouses for young boys because he had come up in a, a troubled youth himself and wanted to serve them as a priest. And those others that were entrusted to caring for them, he wrote a letter and he says to them, it's easier to become angry than to restrain oneself and to threaten a boy than to persuade him. He says, but it's more fitting to be persisting in punishing our own impatience and pride and than to correct the boys. He says, we must be firm and kind and be patient with them. To see them as our own sons, our foster children entrusted to us, Really, this mercy is the best way to lead, and the best way to give mercy is to experience mercy. So I ask you, when was the last time that you 
truly experience God's mercy. Yes, in the sacrament of reconciliation, but deep down, knowing that you have been forgiven, knowing that you are loved and healed by His loving, merciful arms, and to share that mercy with others. Because really, this is the best way to correct, to lead, to bring others to Christ, is to love them with mercy and patience. Trusting in God's providence, we offer the following prayers. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, may God empower all who are called to respond with joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all in public authority, may God free them from pride and the love of power, inspiring them in the ways of servantly leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who grieve the loss of a loved one, may God bring them consolation and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this family of faith, nourished by the Eucharist, may Christ lead us to follow ever more closely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace in our world and for the safety of the men and women of our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us not pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, in your great love for us, look merciful upon these prayers and petitions we bring to you and hold in our hearts. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We have received the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice to yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation made by your consecrated people in commemoration of Blessed John Bosco be, accepted to, be acceptable to you, O Lord, and grant that by participation in this mystery, we may reflect the pattern of your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Bosco, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, Lord God, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the high. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the 
the thought of all holy ones. Make holy, therefore, these gifts to be praised by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have loved us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our mission, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, for the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, that we may be those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your Lord, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word.
Let us pray. May this holy meal give us strength, Almighty God, so that, by the example of Blessed John Bosco, we may show in our hearts and by our deeds both fraternal charity and the light of truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Say, light go to our age, the friendless of God, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be